just so we're clear <clears throat> on the two first two major questions. Oh, is everyone saying that despite what all these other plant-based cardiologists saying about fat, that you believe they're not correct and that it is okay to have raw seeds, raw nuts, olive, raw olives, and avocados? So is any, uh, the, you know, question one, is everyone saying it's okay to eat that? Is anyone saying that any of this can cause cardiovascular quant problems if you have too much? And then question two, again, are you saying that oils is something we should... Um, try to avoid, try to add, it's neutral. So just clearly focus on those two things for a second so we could all try to put this to rest. I'll just simply in. because uh, I am saying that, that uh, because we've done that, you know, people uh, who are lacking essential fats end up with problems. And if you want data, uh, there's volumes of data on that. And I know that many of the cardiovascularly uh, inclined doctors rightfully are concerned about what happens with exceptional fat in the interior part of the vein, which creates an inflammatory condition. But remember, uh, this is not in a vacuum. And I completely concur with what you just said a minute ago. Uh, you know, if you're not realizing that longevity and health starts with the mind, uh, this whole conversation is fraudulent then. And so let's go, go to that stage. And I have gentlemen uh, mostly who have matured and worked in the field of healthcare in most of our cases for 40, 50 years. And as a nutritional guy, I would like to tell you if you change a diet, everyone gets well, but I did that with people who died, uh, even if they ate healthy food because they had a negative attitude and nobody helped them, and nobody worked with them. Everyone here gets psychotherapy. Uh, do I think stimulation, by the way, is important? We're the first institute in history that has an energy medicine department. I just brought new equipment in two weeks ago. That is incredibly helpful. Do I think stem cells? We've been working with stem cell doctors here for 25 years. Uh, with very severe cases, we actually send them with cancer. And for people with joint problems, we send them to a different doctor. We used to work with the NFL. Do we think exercise is important? Uh, you have an option here to either go to the gym, which is open you know, 20 hours a day, or go to one of our 10 classes a day, seven days a week here. We encourage this. And it's unfortunate when we talk about diet, uh, everyone thinks if I just change my food, I'm gonna get better. It just doesn't work that easy. Thank you. Yeah, so so I I would disagree uh, respectfully that you know I, I don't think that that oil should be part of your diet normally. Now I understand if if you check your you know your your omega three levels, your DHA and EPA, and they're low, sure maybe you need to supplement those. But in general, I don't think oil should be part of your diet. Um, I, I mean, I'm okay with essential oils, but that's another issue. I'm okay with topical oil on painful joints or on your hair, but no, I don't think oil should be part of a normal diet because of the damage it does to the surface of red blood cells, which in turn will damage the lining of your arteries when, when, when the blood throws through it. And it's the I'm same type of damage that it's the same type of damage we see with other fatty toxins like mold toxins. The yeah, but, red but blood let's cells get back to some. Are, Start, far, start yeah. forming spikes. So, but, on that but, point, that's, but, but here's what I have to say to you. I grew up doing this. It's my 52nd year. I've seen lots of vegans lose their memory. I've seen lots of vegans age prematurely. And this is something that Dr. Furman and I share. He grew up doing this too. So you can't, I don't know what you can do. I just would prefer that you stay open-minded. I know Dr. Esselstyn has been had, had a major influence. And I love Dr. Esselstyn. We've been on lecture tours to Europe together. But he come through the window of cardiovascular health. And I'm coming through the window of, some of our guests have been coming here for longer than I've been the director. And I've watched these people. Now they're 90 years old, 105 years old. And I've watched these people. And if they're not taking B12 supplements that are proper, and if they're not taking enough essential fats in their diet, they all end up losing memory. 
Right. No question. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, though, is you don't want to use fat at light. I mean, I'm okay with an ounce here, an ounce there throughout the day. But if you're eating avocados, nuts, and seeds unlimited, I see too much people. She said it's unlimited. Away. Nobody said that. And the other thing I'm saying is you don't get DHA from all of those at high levels. So I strongly advise people take an algae-based supplement because that's where I can be assured a person's not going to have uh, the neuron dysfunction that happens from pathways shutting down because of a lack of DHA. Dr. Cousins, Udo, um, Dr. Delgado, again, one more time, do we need oil itself or do we just need fat and do we actually need fat <clears throat> in the form of seeds, nuts, raw seeds, raw nuts, raw olives and avocados and, oh. and, and specifically oil? Going back to the idea that we're unique beings and we aren't a bunch of cows and we have different physiologies. That's one level. Second is the mental state. And there has been research where people uh, go back, they're, they're 30 years out of high school and they go back and they play the high school music and they do this and, you know, a high school mindset and they decrease in their age in one week, you know, up to, up to about 10 years. So the mental state is very important, but I want to get back to your question. So I'm a person who can't eat a lot of fat. Okay. It doesn't work for me. I can have a half an avocado and that works really well. And I have a certain amount of nuts and seeds that works really well. But if I have too much then it doesn't work well. And that's too much protein. Nuts and seeds is the main source of protein. So we got to get the fact that we're unique individuals in this discussion. Now, free oil is different than oil that's in food. And I think that's a little bit of the confusion here, I think. So I don't really recommend free oil, but I do recommend you know, some people taking a half to a full avocado and a certain amount of nuts and seeds. I don't need a lot personally because I'm what we call fast, uh, slow oxidizer. They need more, a little bit more carbohydrate, which my carbohydrate comes from salads. Okay. And then of course you have spinach, it's 49% Protein, of course, you have to eat a bushel of that, but that's a different issue there, okay? But the, the point I'm making is I don't do so well with uh, a lot of fat, a lot of protein, so I have a lower amount of that, and I end up having more of the you know natural carbohydrate, like with vegetables, and, and a touch of, it's like citrus fruit a little bit. So that's the point I'm making. I'm not talking about free oils. That's a different issue. I don't really recommend much of that in, in the big picture. But foods that have oil, different thing. According to your constitution, according to chromosome 19, we are unique individuals. So I think that's part of what confuses the argument. You get something that works. That's, you know, I'm, I'm going to just say something like Brian said. We know that people who do not get enough fat don't, their minds don't work as well. And I also use DHA as a key supplement for building the brain function and maintaining cognition. I also see if your cholesterol gets too low, you actually have a drop in cognition abilities and memory abilities. So there's a few pieces here that we have to understand. So to me, a cholesterol less than 150 isn't very safe because of all kinds of other things that go on. So that's another perspective. So Brian and Udo, um, are you guys saying that we should specifically eat oil or are you saying we should make sure to get fat from seeds, nuts, avocados, and raw olives? Or are you saying no, specifically for your health, you want chia, flax, hemp, olive oil. Are you saying that we should try to get that in our diet? Or are you saying as long as you get it from seeds, nuts, raw olives, and avocados, it's okay? I, I'm trying to go last so that I so that I know what kind of a weight I'm going to have to lift out of the water here. 
because I, I, I use both oils in seeds and oils separate from seeds. But there's a whole other issue that's being completely forgotten in this conversation so far. But I'd like to hear from Dr. Delgado before I do that. I uploaded uh, something that I've worked on for three years from the doctors.com forward slash Pritikin. He was the first to really identify the concern about oils. And what he said was not that the oils themselves were uh, problematic. It was that they act mechanically. They simply, according to Dr. Meyer Friedman, type A, type B personality uh, cardiologist stated that the oils literally coat the blood cells. And when they come to the capillary beds, which I've seen this, tens of thousands of times. The red blood cells are nine microns. The capillaries are seven microns. So the red cells have to bend backwards and squeeze through to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide. If there's a little bit of oil coating them, and trust me, at the head of a pin, there's 8 million red blood cells. So you can, just by consuming separated oils into the gut, go through the lymphatic system to the bloodstream and gum up the entire immune system within six hours. I've demonstrated this time and again, this could be demonstrated a good scientific study, a good theory now becomes science. And what we know is that there's a limit. And yes, if you put a little teaspoon of oil and it goes in because oil is difficult to metabolize, the number one fuel of the body is first glucose. It burns with water, which you excrete and carbon dioxide, which you exhale. If you burn protein, it burns with 30% waste product is very inefficient. As an athlete, I have to be careful of fuels I take in, whereas fat has about seven to 9% waste product, which is ketones, ketoacidosis. It's not a preferred source of energy. It's a default. So if you're going to fuel the body, world-class athletes like um, Dorian Yates, uh, like Lee Haney, particularly eight-time Mr. Uh, Mr. Olympiad, eats 500 grams of complex carbohydrates a day with about 60 to 80 grams of protein a day and somewhere in the mid range of whole fats. I eat whole fats, but I will use oils because Bernardo Lapello lived beyond uh, that lofty age because there's right now I'm told about only four people in the world past 111. So millions of people can reach past uh, 100, but he would rub oil all over his skin, olive oil. I use various oils rubbed on my skin at night to reduce uh, wrinkles and help the layers of the skin. It doesn't absorb much into the general circulation of lymphatics. It just helps the outer layer of the skin, which is, I think, a healthy thing. So I do eat a, a reasonable amount of nut seeds, avocados, all so long as they're soaked, so they're alive, uh, lending to Brian's concept of live whole food and raw food. And there's Every evidence shows increased vitamins, minerals, nutrients, antioxidants uh, when you cook them. But we know the brain size improved after cooking because it wasn't the advent of animal product into the human diet. It was cooking so we could get enough calories so we didn't have to forage and eat all day long. I do carry food with me every single day, every day for 45 years. I don't leave it to chance. I always have whole natural food. Cooked beans are excellent. The longest lived people in the world eat cooked beans. Oil is necessary, but in its package and absorb safely and simply into the digestive gut. I measure people with three avocados and their blood is mucked up. They're vegetarian and they're tired and fatigued. I got them down to half avocado a day because they're not as athletic as I am. And they basically then thrive. So fatigue is commonly complaining why everyone drinks coffee. I don't, I don't need coffee, but they use it because they have so much oil coursing through their bloodstream. Get rid of the excess oils coursing through the blood, just like the excess sugars. Although you can live on a glucose IV, Dr. Felbel did an IV with fat. And within one hour, he caused these people to test diabetic because fat desensitizes insulin. Their ergo, the excess fat is true, according to the cardiologist and Dr. James Anderson, the world-renowned endocrinologist who first enlightened uh, Pritikin, Pritikin enlightened him and uh, Michael Greger and all of us. So we know Again, back to whole food is exactly the way we were designed as humans. Oil came about in 1914, a cold press process. It was not normal to be able to track that amount of oil into the diet. Humans evolved millions of years. You looked at human feces, 10, 20 million years. They ate plant-based foods, not animal foods. And if they did, it was an occasion. So we, we are able to eat like a cockroach. We're able to eat anything like McDougal states. But 
I know they have leaned heavily because they wanted to go fat-free, oil-free. And I talked to um, Caldwell Esselstyn directly in an interview. And he said, well, listen, if I allow them three nuts, they'll take six nuts, they'll take 12. No, just tell them, like Joel Furman, tell them exactly how many nuts and seeds and avocados and olives they can eat. Just don't leave it to chance. They do need the fats, but don't go excessive. And that's the key because the blood is what suffers first. And it, it stays gummed up with triglycerides. I can prove it 100 times out of 100 times in every one of you. On a clean diet, I could infuse that fat by IV, by through your diet, but through your skin, you're safe. If you're eating separated oils, don't do it. Stop. Yes, yeah, sludge blood is not good for you. I, I have an awful lot to say. I've been listening, and there's a lot of, of great jewels that everyone's bringing up here. Number one, uh, we don't just at random tell people they can eat all the fats and all the nuts and the seeds that they want. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw just one month ago, University of Chicago reported a study on women's uh, abdominal fat and basically showed when they ate more avocado, they lost more weight, where men it didn't work for. So you've got to keep up with these studies. I don't know why, you know, that's perplexing to me. Uh, Udo basically so single-handedly Udo single-handedly to the world uh, got us to be awake to essential fatty acids and the congratulation to him. Because again, I'll repeat, I have observed hundreds and hundreds of people on a pure plant-based diet who didn't take any oils and didn't take any fats and didn't get DHA, who basically have dementia. Now, this isn't an opinion. This is a report I'm giving you at this point. <clears throat> Recently okay, so in mainstream literature, they're showing that people who, by the way, are 100 years old, centenarians, generally have higher amounts of lipids within their bloodstream. And I have a hypothesis, I don't know how right this is, when you're younger, if this happens to you, you're more prone for cardiovascular and diabetic conditions, but somehow your metabolism slows down when you get in your 70s, 80s, and 90s. And seemingly, uh, when they test 100-year-old people, they generally almost all of them have high lipid profiles. Now, these are things you should look up. I mean, now, do I think that everything is true, that you may inflame the in, in, internal part of the capillary, which is so small, it's microscopic, by eating too much oil? Yeah, yes. And do I think that Dr. Esselstyn and his team of people that surround him and love what he's saying are right when you just had a heart attack or stroke or phlebitis? It's a good thing not to take any oil to get those capillaries moving again and, and veins. Yeah, but we, I, I would rather have everyone take this into account. And on the last statement I'll make is we do blood tests on people. They come here with outrageously high amounts of you know, cholesterol and triglycerides and low high density lipids. And they're eating, you know, I tell them don't eat it. Our doctors here basically say, don't eat a lot of fat or don't eat any, they're doing it anyway. The other thing we're not taking into account here, these people are coming from meat diets, dairy diets. And we all at once come in like food Nazis and we say to them, you can't eat any fat. Well, for most of these people, that's not realistic. You know, and I've worked personally with 287,000 people, you know, generally for three weeks. It's not realistic. It wasn't realistic for me. I was gonna go from pork chops to spinach. No, I needed lots of fat at that point. Was it healthy for me? But it was. I was capable of maintaining the lifestyle by doing that. And then in reference to what uh, Gabriel said, I completely concur, there's different metabolisms. So there's some people that literally have massive needs for lots of fat. And I don't know the data that you're talking about, Doc, but the fact of the matter is, you say it's the least uh, way we get energy is fat. I'm not sure, there's some cultures, you look at the work of Dr. Hal, going back to the Eskimos, all they eat is fat. Now, I'm not saying they're healthy, they're dying in their 50s and 60s, but that's the only energy they have. So I've seemingly there's it, some people know. on the planet Earth that, that survive and get energy on fat. So I think the jury's not in. All I can tell you is what we've learned here since 1956. 
Go ahead so, and put a comparison study, put uh, the same athletes on a high fat oil based diet, put the same athletes on a high whole complex carbohydrate diets, put the same athletes on a high protein diet. Pio Astrand, the famous uh, Swedish uh, physiologist did this. I have the textbook on my uh, shelf and you will see that uh, without exception, every one of them performed better on a high 500 gram or more complex carbohydrate, low fat, low protein diet, adequate in protein, I might say, not low. I shouldn't even use those words because we get all the protein we need as proven by Walter Kempner, 20 to 40 grams of protein a day. They cleared up their kidneys. They cleared up their diabetes, their heart <clears> disease, <throat> and they lost 147 pounds of fat before after pictures. And they were able to sustain that. I've had people on my program for 20 to 40 years. I've monitored them, including myself. And we do every imaginable test. When a new test comes up, we're looking for cancer markers, omegas, we're checking everything. And if these things, you know, uh, in all respect to Udo, if I see a low uh, omega, I'm looking at it, but I'm looking at the marine algae. Where does the fish get its fats from? From, from the, the algae. I'm looking at where's the best sources of fats, nuts, seeds, avocados, all well, flaxseed, walnuts. And I notice they relieve an essential fatty acid. Dr. Press did an experiment, put people on a glucose IV for 30 days. They developed fat essential fatty acid deficiencies. He then rubbed oil on the skin and it relieved that essential fatty acid deficiency just within days of rubbing it through the skin and absorption. So guys, that's, we that's absorb fat, we stop, need fat stop, and we can get it. Stop there for a minute and repeat that. So you're saying subdermally, it actually increased the omega count, but when you ingested it, it reduced it? What, I, what I'm saying is that uh, when, when you're ingesting separated oils, <clears throat> The big danger is clumping of the blood rouleau. Every doctor who's ever looked at blood under a microscope, and I've checked blood hematology experts, uh, uh, Dr. Dipmai Maharaj, world expert, uh, stem cell expert in Florida, and he admits he never him. looks at, yeah, he never <laughs> looks at live blood like I do. I've tested all the doctors you know. Uh, Michael Clapper, they, they've worked <laughs> for me, or I've tested them, and I can tell you for a fact, I can repeat this experiment over and over again. So I'm going to say it very simply. I'm not going to defer to say that if you eliminated all oils from the diet, but it was done by Dr. Press, that using oil on the skin is enough because the brain has its needs, the, the nerves, et cetera. But what I'm saying is it was enough to relieve an essential fatty acid deficiency showing up in the skin and various symptoms. What I'm saying is that we have to be judicious about this highly concentrated food we call fat. And when we do eat soaked nut seeds, I believe Dr. Howell wrote a book about enzymes. You may buy into this or not. There's some dispute about enzymes and live food, but I think there's a lot of value in it, right? Live begets live. So I don't think there's much argument there, but I would say that nuts, seeds, avocados, and olives, you should pour off the anti-enzyme property when you soak them because they may deplete your own body's enzymes and en enzymes uh, beget life. So I do soak them and I'm very careful and I do the daily dozen like uh, uh, Michael Greger talks about. I add my own spins on whole foods. And so I, I'm a very big believer, whatever you can get from whole foods, but then I don't leave it at there. I take supplements where I see deficiencies and I intervene on each patient every single time and even take it to the caution. I take these added supplements, about 30. Jack Lang took 90 supplements every day for every year he was old. And he was a fitness addict and he only had a, an adrenal deficiency and a little interest in alcohol. And I think he just had a little problem when he had a cold or a flu and it put him over the, over the hill. But every one of you know that the immune system is very delicate. The body is strong when treated properly. So let's use oils properly. They are nut seeds, avocados, olives, used in amounts that meet our daily needs. And how do we know? We check omega tests. We check for symptoms. We check for brain function and cognition. I've helped people with Alzheimer's stage four, reverse it, not just by putting whole foods in their diet and taking all the animal dairy. We all agree, get rid of animal dairy, except a few of us on the panel, but I put them on bioidentical hormones. I put them on outdoor daylight. I put them on stem cells and I get their brain function back. I've done this with not a lot, but about five patients and we've reversed and brought them back. Okay, Let me ask I, you, what, what so lipid I, profile is best? Okay. You're um, doing an extensive lipid profile? Yes. Hey, Udo, Udo is about to say something. Yeah, well, well it's okay. I can, I can wait till last. It's not a problem. Uh, 
So you want to you want to answer the question well, and then apolipoprotein A should be done at least once. You know, once you know that's not a genetic factor, then then you're pretty much home free. But I do look at free fatty acids, not just triglycerides, because sometimes I'll get a low triglyceride and have a huge amount of free fatty acids that I see under the microscope, and then I pick it up uh, with a, a quick side test. And Pritikin admitted this as well. Also, uh, fasting <laughs> in the morning, you're going to get your highest triglycerides, and that's why uh, Joseph Mercola told me once that he doesn't eat fruit because he. He's afraid of triglycerides, but if he understood that in a 24 hour period, uh, if you go 12 hours and you then uh, check the blood uh, in a normal state, like post prandial, I love to check people in the middle of the day because then I really catch them with what's going on in their bloodstream, not just fasting. And most every study can. Uh, concurs with what I'm saying, and that is the postprandial better matches cardiovascular risk, diabetic risk. And the only reason we started fasting for tests because people eat like pigs, they eat so badly. There's so much oil and fat in their blood. They had to say, hey, that was just a, a fake test. Don't worry, go home. You ate steak and eggs and meat and, and cake. Just come back after fasting. Okay, good patient. You, you pass, pass the test. That's ridiculous. You should be able to pass your test. And I have benchmarks for where your triglycerides should be after you eat. And I told this to Mercola. He didn't quite follow what I was saying. I agree, avoid industrial fructose, avoid the sugars, but don't throw out the baby with the baby wash. Don't throw out the, you know, the whole fats, keep the whole fats, get rid of the oils. It's so clear in blood and blood chemistry. And yes, I check HDL, LDL, VLDL. I check every imaginable kind of test for lipids. I do uh, the ultra fast CT scans to look at imaging. Now, some people like myself have some old hardened plaques, but we have no soft plaques or completely gone. There's some pig studies show you might reverse hardened old plaques, but it's probably fairly difficult because I used to eat 12 eggs a day. I was the biggest animal eater you can imagine. I had my first stroke when I was 21, like John McDougall. I don't <laughs> want to have another stroke. I'm not going to go back to eating oils, meat, cheese, eggs, and dairy products. That's insanity. I'm not going to die young because I got to break that record. Okay. Well, I don't know what's going on my on my 19th chromosome, but it's a little bit different from what I'm hearing here. The way I got into oils was because it was confusing. You know, I learned about essential fatty acids, omega-6 and omega-3, that your body can't make, but you have to have, so they have to come in from outside. And omega-3 was established as essential the year after I got interested in nutrition because I got poisoned by pesticides. So I was looking at all of this, and the thing that drove me nuts was the research said omega-6 is essential. That's been known since 1929. And then there'd be a the next study I would read, say omega-6s give you cancer and kill you. And I was like, huh? <laughs> it's essential for health and it kills you. What? <laughs> and and th it drove me nuts. And so what I did is I looked deeper into why that could, why this contradiction could exist, something that's essential, killing you. And it, that's when I discovered the, the processing done to oils. Oils, the essential fatty acids, omega-3 especially, the most sensitive of all of our essential nutrients, damaged very easily by light, by oxygen, and by heat, needs the most care of all of our nutrients, and we throw it in a frying pan. And, and wreck it with light, oxygen, and heat all at the same time. And so the idea that came to me was, well, we should be, I can't get healthy on damaged oils. I'll get to that in a second. We should make them with health in mind. And then I developed a method for doing that. Now, why is that? Because the industry since 1900, when it began, the major industry, not the olive oil industry, because that's a little older, but the oil industry, in order to get a long shelf life on oils, took the oils out of the food they were in and then treated them with sodium hydroxide, which we know as Drano, that we clean out our sink pipes with, right? When they, when they clog up, we burn through it. Very corrosive base. Then they treated with phosphoric acid, a very corrosive acid that is used for cleaning, degreasing windows. Then they treated it with bleaching clays because the color molecules in oils absorb light and the light then damages the oil because they're sensitive to damage by light. So they have to get rid of those. So they do that with bleaching clays. And then the oil is rancid. It's oxidized and, it, and smells bad. 
And in order to clean that up, they have to deodorize it. I used to call it destinkerize it, right? Because <laughs> it stinks, so you have to treat it with with uh, and you, and the way you do that is you heat it to frying temperature in order to get rid of the rancid molecules. You're actually boiling them off the oil. You're boiling the oil to get rid of the rancid molecules. And at the end of it, you have a colorless, odorless, tasteless cooking, uh, what do they call them? Salad cooking and culinary oil. And, all of, and, and it's been heated to frying temperature before it went into the plastic bottle, before it went in the sh on the shelf, before anybody went and bought it. And all, most all of the research on oils is done with those kind of oils. Now, what is the problem with that? Well, the research in lipids, they said, when you treat oil that way, a half to 1% of the molecules are damaged. So a half to 1%. And so I called the Oil Chemist Society. I said, I want to talk to a researcher. They got the guy on the phone. I said, well, when you know this does damage, this processing does damage to the oil, why do you do that? And he said, well, one of the reasons we do that is because when we, could, when we treat the oil that way, we can get rid of the half of the pesticides in the oil. I was like, well, I didn't even know there were pesticides in oils, right? So I'm shocked. And of course, I got poisoned by pesticides. So it was a, a bit of a trigger for me. So I said to him, well, why don't you start with organically grown seeds? Because then you don't have the problem. And there was this long silence at the other end of the phone. And I waited. <laughs> you know, I can talk, but I wait. I, I'm a good waiter, too. You may have noticed, right? And then when he got back, he was really ticked. He said, I don't know what your problem is. The oil is 99% good, and it's only 1% damage. And if you got 99% on an exam, You'd be damn happy, wouldn't you? So now I'm backing off and I say, well, maybe I'm overreacting. It's only 1%. So we have a saying, when in, in doubt, do the math. So I did the math. So I said, the question I asked is, if you have a tablespoon of oil that has been treated this way and it's 1% damaged, how many damaged molecule would you have in that tablespoon of oil? So, I want you guys each to give me a number, if you would do it. Just guess, you know, because you don't know, right? You don't know. 10 to, so. the, 10 to the 22nd, pretty high. Okay. Anybody else? If you're looking just at damage, why are yeah, you just, addressing the oils thickening the blood? You have not addressed the clumping of the blood. That is the well, biggest well, well, issue. We, we haven't taken the oil yet. We haven't even taken the oil yet to mess up the blood. I'm, okay. I, I'm talking about the processing. Well, the processing many, is a serious problem. Agreed. Yeah, how many damage? How many damaged molecules? I got, I got one number. I, I would agree, 10, 10 to the six, uh, over a million. It could be ten to the uh, ten to the seventh, uh, as Joshua mentioned. Okay, I said so ten to the twenty second. Oh, the that. twenty second. Wow, that's that's an infinity number. <laughs> okay, and you said uh, ten. Uh, you said I, I'm uh, saying 10, 10 to the seventh, probably uh, ten which million. Is, which you is know. 10 million. Okay. Gabriel? Dr. Well, Gabriel? I'm just guessing here, right? Yeah, of course we get of course we're all guessing. This this is the fun of it. So I'd say at 10 to the seventh. Say, okay. And and do you? I have no idea. Oh that, that's not a number. Sorry, come <laughs> on, you gotta play. <laughs> well, I mean it would be a purely speculation, so it's of a course. silly thing to speculate. Yeah, of course. It's a silly I, thing I, to speculate. Yeah. Uh, come on, give me a number. Possibly in between 10 to 12 and 7 to 12. <laughs> 10 to 12 and 7 to 12? What? <laughs> in between that. Okay. So I do this with audiences when I talk. And invariably, their estimate of damage is at least a billion times too low. A billion times too low. Now, I've never ever, except today got a 10 to the 22nd that's that's an outrageously high number <laughs> that's high. but 10 to the 7th 10 million you said 10 million right so 10 million mm -hmm. you have to go to 10 billion 10 trillion 10 quadrillion 10 quintillion times six that's how much too low your estimate was 
And you guys are smart guys, right? And, and the number is 60 quintillion damaged molecules in a tablespoon of oil that is 1% damaged. And that's enough to get you a, a million, more than a million damaged molecules for every one of your body's 60 trillion cells. But, but Udo, if you eat nuts, seeds, avocados, they're less damaged than oil. I buy your oil and yeah. I rub it on my skin. Yeah, yeah. But, right? And then you smell like paint all day. <laughs> At night, I, I wash off in the morning. My girlfriend yeah, okay. doesn't matter. She oh, you doesn't... do? Are you? Okay, so yeah, then yeah. your sheets, then your sheets to crunch are crunchy in the morning. No, I, I put on the, some long uh, jogging trunks that I wash, um, you know, periodically. So I, I dealt with that issue. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, Udo, are, are you yeah. saying I'm a little bit too high at 10 to the 22nd? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you, you're the only person who's ever been too high. They're always at least a billion times too low. And of course, our two other experts here. U Udo. Uh, the it, one who wasn't Udo, chicken. Excuse but, me, Udo. Udo mm -hmm. Please let make the point. I want to move on with other questions. So make the point yeah. that you're trying to make. Okay, so, so the point was the issue I, and all of the research, almost all of the research is done on oils that have that much damage done to them. And they, nobody makes a distinction between what of the problems that these oil, oils cause comes from processing and what is damage caused by the oil itself. And so what we did, we decided to make oils with health in mind. We created a very tight system so that no light, no oxygen and low temperature gets to the oil, you know, and it's in glass, not in plastic, because plastic leaches into oils. And we focus on not saturated fats, which make your blood sticky, but on the essential fatty acids, which have negative charges and actually disperse instead of clogging. And, and then we, and then- Add to your uh, conversation, that when you heat an oil, and that's what you're suggesting, that the processed oil, and when an oil becomes rancid, you have the same exact molecule problem. So right. uh, yeah. you well, can take, you get, you can you take get, your oil, leave it out in the sun, and, and in two weeks, it's going to be giving the same kind of peroxide problem. Of course, you have of course, processed. because they're very sensitive. We're making very sensitive oil. They need a lot of protection. We give them the protection. It's a pain in the ass to work with them, but that's, that's what we do. And when using those oils, we've used them with athletes. We've done two, a couple of studies with athletes. If they took, and we're taking pretty high quantities, a tablespoon per 50 pounds of body weight per day. So for most people, it would be two, three, four tablespoons mixed in food spread out over the course of the day. And within 30 days, the athletes that we have in our study, if they did their sport to exhaustion, had 40 to 60% increase in stamina. Is that a published study that you did? No, we didn't publish it because we're, we were not affiliated with the university. We had one done in Denmark and the other one was a multinational study. And- uh, That's interesting. And, and, uh, and then some of our athletes found it so amazing that they actually doubled the intake to 50% of their calories. And they rant and raved about how fast they recovered, how quickly they healed, how much less pain they had in their joints, how, how much faster they built, built up their, their, their muscles in their exercise. Uh, let, let me ask a question and, to the, let yeah. me ask a question to the panel. You made a great point. Yeah. Don't you think an athlete who's a competitive athlete uh, could burn off oil much differently than you and I who sit behind a desk often. What do all of you think about that? Completely. Yeah, of course. Someone like yeah. Rich Roll who runs ultra marathons or me, I do nonstop weightlifting. Yeah. We definitely burn more fat. I've proven that under the microscope. <laughs> I've seen the triglycerides, the free fatty acids. 90% of people listening to this show are couch potatoes. Even if they're yeah. plant-based, I notice they don't get into exercise. Even my mom makes the excuse. I says, oh, son, I know the diet works so well. And, you know, uh, I'm going to skip exercise. I said, no, so, mom, we're going to go for a walk in the morning. I just published, by the way, my free fatty acids. Uh, that is my omegas, EPA. DPA, literally that I got April 10th, 2022. I'm not afraid to publish my results on everything I'm doing. So you can see yep. how I'm going to break the world record for healthy aging. The only thing is slightly low is my omega uh, three. Everything else is perfect. And so what I'm doing is so, leaning into a little bit more of the omega three and rubbing so, that into my skin so, and taking that in my whole food. 
Okay. Gabriel, so, what do you so think me, about that guys, athleticism? Well, and... well, I don't. I don't want to go in a lot of directions. Just I want to focus. I want to move to the next question. Udo, okay. please. Do you have anything final to say in yeah. ten seconds on this? Yeah. The other thing that is hel is helpful is that the omega threes are five times more sensitive than the omega sixes, and if and if you get enough of them, first of all, they increase your metabolic rate, they increase thermogenesis, they give you more energy. If your mother got more, she might actually exercise because she has energy to do that. <laughs> they also improve brain function. And we used as optimum to take enough oil to make your skin soft and velvety because omega-3 and 6 together form a barrier in the skin against the loss of moisture. When you only get one or you don't get enough, your skin goes dry because your inner inner organs get priority on them. So we measure optimum by skin feel. And if your skin is dry, you will also end up with low energy level. And if when you optimize your oil intake, you not only get the nice skin, but you also you also get the energy. This is what we keep getting the feedback on consistently. And I've been at it since 1981. So that's like 40 well, years. That's the year we discovered omega-3. Yeah, 1980. Well, I start. I got poisoned in 1980. I, I happened to be at, there at the right time, which is why I got into omega threes. So I didn't invent the omega threes, but I got there at the perfect time.